It's the last day of the expedition, but time and money have almost run out. Lee is the only one left on what should be a day for clearing up, writing reports and packing for the journey home. But something has made all that seem irrelevant. The previous day, a member of Lee's team found a picture of another cave in an old guidebook. The cave supposedly contains some old bones. Before he heads back, Lee wants to see if he can find the new cave. It's six and a half kilometers away on the other side of Palau. Full steam ahead, let's go. Could the little people have spread to other islands? Will Lee find another treasure trove of fossils that could tell them more about this lost tribe? Finding evidence of the same small people here would force the scientists to rethink some of the theories on how the cave people might have lived and died. The geology of the cave is almost a facsimile of the bone cave, except that here, the roof hasn't collapsed. But no sign of any fossils. The coolness of the air and silence make it a dark, eerie place. Here are the bats. All right, let's go slow here. Oh, my goodness. Huh. This is stunning. The cave is full of fossilized bones. Bones of a vanished people. Small bodied, big featured, small brained, they appear to be similar to the remains found on the other side of the islands. They really are strange looking people. I don't think these are modern Palauans again. I think they're. I think there are earlier guys. That's a stunning puzzle. Very, very thick. Because my finger almost. Lee knows he must return to Palau soon. Because his second discovery makes this one of the greatest concentrations of fossilized human remains planet. So it's just thousands and thousands of little pieces of bone all packed together and all being pushed into these back corners, which have even more bone in them. It's amazing how well some of them are fossilized. Wow. It's more than Lee could have ever hoped for. I'm speechless and could provide more support for his theory that changes in human evolution may have happened over hundreds instead of thousands of years. The sheltered environment means the condition of some of the fossils is astounding. Lying near the center of the cavern is a complete skull, gripped by the cave. With its well-preserved remains, this second cave will give scientists a much larger sample from which to draw their conclusions. If the dates are confirmed, they should strengthen the theory that evolutionary adaptations can happen much quicker than anyone thought possible. It's like caves of death, aren't they? There are hundreds of people with sat in corners and in nooks and crannies. And then they just fall apart. find is a fitting conclusion to the expedition. 
Lee travels to the United States with samples from the first cave. Now it's time to do the kind of thorough testing that will enable the team to pinpoint when these tiny people existed and help establish whether they really evolved from modern humans. At the carbon dating lab in Florida, samples are burned so they can measure the carbon-14 isotope to get an accurate date. The results are very near the estimate. With plus or minus 50 years, that gives us 2890 to 2750 for the top of that. So we're right at 3,000 years on that, eh? Mm -hmm. And that's a 95% confidence level. The tests prove the scientists' theory. This lost tribe of tiny people existed on the island recently, from 3,000 to just 1,500 years ago. The dates suggest these people adapted to their surroundings faster and more dramatically than most people had ever believed possible. The numbers have another revelation in store. In carbon dating terms, the range of dates from oldest to most recent is very small. So in my experience, when I see numbers like this, very often they're associated with a single event. A tsunami. Tsunami, sure, sure, some, some catastrophic event. But the geography of the islands makes the tsunami theory unlikely. If it were one, I'd buy that. I'd buy that, that tsunami wave coming in and we all rush to the caves and bam, you're dead. But how's that happen on two sides of the island, both facing opposite directions? So it's almost as if these people were there and then gone. Yeah. The question of what ultimately killed the cave people remains a mystery. But their very existence could call into question the current theories about the speed of human evolution and have repercussions for years to come. We thought that humans have evolved over tens of thousands of years, our pronounced brow lines slowly disappearing, our skulls expanding to accommodate a larger brain. But instead of increasing in height over generations, the Palawan cave people appear to have done the opposite. Lee believes that the discovery of such small people in Palau is evidence of the elasticity of human beings. The drastic change could be possible in a short window of time as our bodies adapt to be better suited to the environments we create. It's a bold and even controversial theory but one that evidence found in the bone caves seems to support. The way we traditionally think about human evolution, particularly since the advent of technology, is that we humans change the environment. But in Palau, it's just the opposite. The environment is changing us. Over time, new data will be collected from Palau. More theories will be spun, and perhaps a more fully realized portrait of humanity will begin to emerge. One that encompasses the ever-surprising adaptability of our human race.